Hey, what's up everybody? Nola Deech here and I'm coming to you from City Park, New Orleans, because there's something really interesting I want to show you. The original entrance to City Park is right over there. Let's go check that out. Just up ahead, right there, is an archway that denotes the original entrance to City Park. City Park New Orleans is pretty huge. There's a lot to see and do here, and there are quite a few ways to get in and out of the park. But now, I think the main entrance would be considered the long drive off of Esplanade Avenue, leading straight into where the New Orleans Museum of Art is. And this is still an entryway into the park, but this was originally the main entrance a long time ago. The park was founded in 1854. It didn't become the official city park of New Orleans until 1891. And it wasn't until 1910 when they erected this archway. The Pizzotti Gate is one of the oldest structures in City Park, New Orleans. It's named so because it was donated by a steamboat captain named Salvatore Pizzotti. He was the leading importer of tropical fruit and is the first steamship captain to bring bananas into the United States. And he was also a philanthropist. In 1905, Mother Cabrini of New Orleans asked for his help to build a new orphanage on Esplanade Avenue. Captain Pizzotti generously donated the money to make that happen. In 1959, the orphanage closed and that building became Cabrini High School. In 1910, Pizzotti donated what was then called the City Park Gate. It would later be renamed the Pizzotti Gate after him. His name is inscribed above one of the entryways through the gate, and on the other entryway is the date it was placed here. This gate would be the last public donation by Captain Salvatore Pizzotti. He would pass away just five years later. Pizzotti died in 1915 and he was buried right here in Metairie Cemetery. It's a little hard to see, but you can see that there's only two people buried here. Salvatore Pizzotti himself, born 1839 to 1915, followed by his wife, Francis Valenzano Pizzotti, from 1853 to 1919. And it doesn't look like anybody else is buried here. Beautiful, beautiful tomb. In 1871, on Canal Street, a fountain was put up by a rich foundry owner named Jackson Ogden Belknap. The Belknap Fountain was a 22-foot tall cast iron pavilion, and it was not just a typical fountain. It included little boats, cupids, and swans as part of the structure, and the entire thing was lit up by gas at night. Once streetcars started showing up, the fountain was just in the way, and it had to be removed. So it was moved to City Park, right behind the Pizzotti Gate entrance. You can see here where it once stood. So but right over here would have been the location of the Belknap Fountain. It is no longer there. In fact, the last recorded sighting of it in this location was about 1913 to 1915. It varies depending on who you talk to. But, I'm willing to bet this right here would have been the water feed for the fountain. Right in this spot here. And it's no longer there. Nobody seems to know exactly what happened to the fountain. Most people seem to think the fountain was destroyed by a hurricane in 1915. But there's a few people that seem to think the fountain was actually removed from this location and moved somewhere else to an area called Pine Island. Now, the reports kind of vary as to what Pine Island is. Some say it could be this coastal barrier island that actually exists underneath part of the city of New Orleans. Or it could be this marshy area southwest of Lafayette. It might even be this area located just northwest of Shreveport. Some even speculate it remained in City Park, was turned into an aviary, and was placed on what is now known as Scout Island, saying that Scout Island might have at one time been called Pine Island. When the land for City Park was donated to the city in 1854 by philanthropist John McDonough, the land sat overgrown for many years until 1891. That's when Victor Anzeman formed the City Park Improvement Association. 
it was then developed into City Park. Just inside the gate here, into the park just a little ways, is a bridge named for Victor Ansman, considered the father of City Park. As I walk up to the bridge, I can see a little plaque mounted right on the side here. Let's see what it says. Sure enough, dedicated to Victor Ansman for his great devotion to the park, 1842 to 1904. In the 1920s, after you entered through the Pizzotti Gate and crossed over the Anzaman Bridge, you would see these statues of scantily clad women. They were originally above the main entrance to the New Orleans Cotton Exchange, which was built in 1823. When the building was going to be demolished in 1920, the statues were brought here to City Park and placed on either side of the street. And just over the bridge here is what looks to be the spot from that picture. You can kind of see the same setup where the pine trees would have been and maybe where the statues would have been right there on the corner. It no longer resembles what it did in that picture, but you can tell that this is most likely that spot on that corner and that corner would have sat those statues that are no longer there. Thank you for watching. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you like what you see, make sure you click that like button down below. And if you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Right next to it is a little bell icon. You click that and you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed a little land yap from this who dat out here at City Park, New Orleans. Go pass a good time.